Well, people for us, uh, good evening. Uh, the program when they watch na Udwata, the heart of the matter, and the reach from independent television. Yes, today in a very special program based on popular demand, uh, the state of the economy, and uh, in terms of uh, security, economy, and even many other things, and even politics. So, based on popular demand, we don't bring one of our father, a, pat a patriot, a renowned economist, and a professor of economics at the same time, somebody who is also a social critic, and somebody who has actually been there for this country that so many people are looking up to. We have with us in the studio, via Zoom, all the way from uh, Lagos, Nigeria, Professor Pat Utomi. Prof, good evening, sir. Good evening. How are you doing, sir? The first all is well in Benin. Very well, very well, very well. How are you, sir? Thank God. <laughs> okay. So, Prof, uh, today... We well, are <laughs> trying to get the feel. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you very much for the opportunity because uh, we know that you are somebody who has seen it all and just for us to tell the world some things about uh, the state of our nation. So today, probably we'll start from uh, this issue of dollar. The, the, the dollarization of our economy, or rather the dollarization of our economy in terms of the way people spend dollar in Nigeria, the way people use dollar in Nigeria, and all of those things. And you can't kind of join within CBN, they do, whether those things will provide the right solution that we want. start with uh, the states the value of any currency a function of a magician's wand the state of the value of the currency is a function of capacity economy to produce and to exchange what they produce because they have advantage in that area other people produce that enables them to buy what will produce competitive price the question of why then naira is where it is a very long one for which many people significant blame you know 56 there was no manufacturing in nigeria literally none at all there were basically two factories i think federated motor industries and the uh, nigerian breweries that probably were the only two real factories in nigeria in 56. Uh, because colonial administration did not want manufacturing in nigeria they want just wanted to take raw materials from Nigeria to Europe. The government came by 1957. New leaders of Nigeria were so anxious the economy into manufacturing. It's such a phenomenal job of it. At 1960, manufacturing made up percent of GDP of Nigeria. Mill, for example, that opened in, in 1960, it took all its products six months in advance. Textile merchants in Manchester, in England. So we began actually with export led industrialization. So we were earning dollar from our manufacturing by 1960. These things made the quality of life. For Nigerians who lived in those days, as a young boy, other clothes, used to order the clothes I wore via catalog from England. T shirts, polo, all kinds of things. You just pound, naira. Or there was no naira even there, it was pound. We used pound. This was going well. It became a significant factor in our economy. 
date that we're talking about was the same year oil was discovered in commercial quantities in what is now River State. This of oil, which led to, to earn a lot of money from the oil economy, uh, our country, to a situation we neglected the manufacturing sector, said the agricultural sector, it became so high, it did not make any sense for the man in Leonuji to grow cocoa. Said he abandoned the farm and became a messenger in NNPC. <laughs> There's what economists refer to Dutch disease that follows elevation of what they call the non-tradable goods sector of the economy. In all that money from uh, oil, what did we do? We embarked on heavy construction. A lot of contracts to companies to build new ports, build stadia, build this. We left the farms, went to be messy um, and whatever, whatever in those places. Oil prices up. The government did not earn enough from oil. Construction company laid off those people. We had a certain crisis in our country. Those people couldn't go back to the farms to begin to produce export. The manufacturing sector was already becoming less competitive. Factories became um, you go to you come to Lagos, the Lukwinju area, all the Keja, many of those factories became churches. Forced into crisis, like now that we are having most of our oil stolen, and the uh, oil sector is challenged, is not uh, competitive, what you find is that your exchange rate will begin to crash. That is what we are inside of. In this kind of situation, it's a strategy to move back quickly, manufacturing more competitive, to making agriculture more competitive. Fortunately, the policies that are in place are helping matters because those who are making the decisions, the politicians, are majorly the ones creating the problems. Naira, Naira, is uh, having challenges. So-called removal of subsidy rate means that plenty of naira is now in the suitable pool fund for the state governments to share with the federal government. Money is going to the state governments, as to the federal government also. Many of the politicians just convert the money and come to try and buy a dollar on the exchange rate. Problems are complex and self-inflicted to an extent. This is where we are right now. And honest politicians are by the people who can focus on rebuilding the economy, not looking for what they can get now, 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 now. I mean, if you look at what happened with the state of the economy in a major emergency, Nigeria has fallen to the level of being the poverty capital of the world. And instead, what are we seeing our politicians doing? Themselves, uh, Jeeps, shall work. Serious countries, you go to Egypt, I go to Egypt very often. They are doing so much for the people, building a new Cairo, building this, building that, 16 lane expressways, all of that. You see a senior official in a Toyota Corolla, that's serious. Yeah, where we are doing nothing, even the uh, 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 deputy director in any ministry wants to be in a Prado. Priorities are completely misplaced. What we really have is a government of politicians, by politicians, for politicians, people. The political class has disconnected from the people. It's a tragedy for our country. 
we are fighting right now. How can we reverse this thinking? There's a lot of work to be done by everybody. Okay, let's uh, say... The problem is that we're not enough as citizens. Okay, make, make we go ahead, Prof. Uh, ahead. Uh, there's something uh, that I also want to ask you now. Maybe the rule, because when I did secondary school there, where you, small, small boys now, we hear of this IMF and um, World mm. Bank. Now, because uh, to your, 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 your comment on the program today is based on popular demand. And uh, the, we really want to know from you, the, what will be the role of this uh, IMF and World Bank in our economy as it is? Because right now, with the SA, IMF, they say, uh, make we remove subsidy from uh, electricity. Make we remove subsidy from this. And at the same time, some people say that this IMF and World Bank, they don't even help us they track our ill-gotten uh, words that this uh, politician they think good all in their country. But they are giving us this and that and that. Another school of thought said, ah, but some other economists in the uh, other uh, Asian some uh, uh, Asian countries, the IMF did not help them to grow. And World Bank. Yes. Oh, IMF. Any to do with your economy if you don't cause problem for your economy. If you don't know your economy well, it won't be their own business. Don't fail for help. You will go meet them. And they say, ah, if we will help you, then get some condition where you will meet. What they call conditionalities. Now that's what they annoy people. But now you cause the thing will make them, they give you conditionality. If you run your house well, who will come meet you say take conditionality? Explain this a little clearly. True. Asian economies are very strong using those same uh, institutions. Why do the institutions exist? Let me explain why they came into existence. Has been a history in the world that trade, international trade, is to grow. Everybody begins to prosper because you know how to make uh, moi moi. Uh, people from Germany like to eat moi moi. They buy your moi moi. They are moto. They are moto. Everything they go well. Trade usually brings greater prosperity. When people don't they get money plenty, we we'll say, ah, we have to be very careful. Oh. We don't want to import too many cars from Germany because they're not eating enough uh, my, my We have to prevent our people from buying cars from Germany. Now, those kinds of policies, economists call them bigger than neighbor policies. Is you begin to have uh, trade barriers. In economic transactions, really invariably, most times, bigger than neighbor policies lead to economic recession. When economic recession or depression, like 1929 one comes, people get very irrita irritable, quarreling with one another. Small thing, big war, and World War II. At the end of the war, it begins again. Prosperity, poor policies. So as World War II, they come to an end. The people who win the war, the Allied powers, decide to make meeting for one small town for northeast of America, Woods of how to prevent this cycle to then create some institutions which will help make sure that trade is managed in such a way economic intercourse is managed in such a way people don't get into those kinds of situations where they are desperate and then as is that leads to war institutions where IMF to regulate that kind of thing so that if country 
get serious problem, IMF send them money to use to tide over that difficult period. To lend people money when they don't create problem for their economy, to give them conditions to make sure they don't create that same problem again. This is what they call conditionalities. They created World Bank to help emerging countries to get development loans. That's how the IMF, World Bank, IFC, MIGA, and Co. constitutes the so-called multilaterals, the, the, the um, institutions. Now, usually, what has happened they don't manage their economies well. The politicians are irresponsible or, or other problems that they may face, like um, external shocks. IMF. IMF is supposed to give you a bridging finance to overcome that. I don't want you to misbehave, so they give you conditions. Now, Oh, now IMF is not supposed to be your permanent visitor. It's supposed to be just an in agency. It's in trouble. Then you overcome your trouble, manage yourself as well. People don't have their troubles or manage themselves well. What makes the IMF seem to give you very stringent conditions? They call them names. Countries like South Korea, that is a huge leading manufacturing power today helped a lot by World Bank the people who helped Bank IMF intervention in Korea was a Nigerian World Bank at the time called Kalu Indika Kalu one of those posted to South Korea in the 60s what unfortunately has been the problem with us is that we have been irresponsible in the way that we manage our resources. If you go back to all the things I've been saying for the last 40 years, you will see that I, I predicted all the things that are happening to us today because we refuse to be responsible. Very well, sir. Yes, that's correct. And you see, there is a country, a small, because normally we give uh, examples of Norway and all of that. Yes, sir. They managed to save money during boom. And that money they saved during boom, they call Sovereign Wealth Fund. Yes, sir. Use them when things are, are low. But let me not go far away to sophisticated countries like Norway. Let me use an African country as an example. Okay. Who's Central Bank we help the set up? In 1968 and 1980, fastest growing economy in the world from di diamond exports. And I realized that, look, <clears throat> these diamonds, every generation of is forever and ever. Generation that is exporting it now, full money. Okay. So changing their children and their children's children. Ghana has what you call a future fund. For many years, I've been suggesting that Nigeria's income from boom times in oil, for example, a limited amount that should go into our budget process. Second tranche, you put in a fund to have consistent budgeting. Say. If we use uh, $50 a, a, a barrel to do our budgeting, an oil price can drop to 30 The day it goes to 70 you make sure that 20 is put aside. So the day it drops to 30 we'll still be budgeting constant $50 a barrel of certainty. See, that's the most important thing. Not even whether your exchange rate is 1,000 to 1, or one to one, the stability is what gives, so for example, confidence. Brings in ten million dollars to build a factory in Nigeria. 
be a predictable rate. He can take his money out when he needs to take it out and he can continue to reinvest. There is stability. The change is crossed like it happened last two, three months. You see, most of the nationals are living in Nigeria. Yes. All the money they brought in has been wiped out to our exchange rate. Yeah. Every big multinational we know, so much money. MTN just uh, announced their own. They've lost their shareholders' funds. They're literally bankrupt. They need new cash to be able to function. That's one of the biggest companies in Nigeria. You've seen your factors leaving the country. It's um, a Procter and Gamble or whatever, whatever. They're all living in Nigeria. If we had a, a, a strategy to manage our exchange rate, not by manipulating it, but by being responsible with spending the dollars that we earned in the past, we would not have that happen. Those companies will be producing, will be exporting, exchange rate can be basically in the 70s, fun and used to be like 300 to 1. 400 to 1. Say that Japanese exchange rate crossed 200, like 190. They were crying in Japan. It's getting so strong that the things that they're exporting to America may become more expensive. The real problem is because we're not producing. Why are we not producing? We don't have a national strategy. Political class is just taking um, uh, 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 and buying themselves fancy things when they can't produce and all of that. So we are basically run our economy to the ground. Why we are where we are. The number of things are done systematically and consistently is trouble. For a long time, and it can get much worse. What happened to Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe was such a beautiful country. In 1984, I visited Zimbabwe. Just independent, about two, three years or whatever. Major exporters of agri produce to all of those. So, the political class began to behave badly. Things that they do, much damage. Ah, okay, we can't pay our bills. Governor Central Bank, they print us some money. It's more money. Money chasing a few goods. Inflation will go up. Inflation just going up. Of other pressures, and people will begin to leave the country. The economy will get into a tank, literally. Because Zimbabwe's exchange rate so bad. Uh, uh, you know, at the point in time, ten thousand to one dollar, twenty thousand happened to any country. How many? The Weimar Republic in um, the nineteen What led to World War II? There that you got the saying, a wheelbarrow of money to the to, to the market and come back with a loaf of bread. Why the Central Bank of Germany, the Bundesbank, for many years before the European Bank, one thing that they would not joke with any slight is a smell of inflation coming in. To use monetary policy, use every policy to manage um, inflation. Okay. When you don't manage inflation, it impacts the exchange rate and so on and so forth. That's what has happened to Nigeria. The Buhari government was a tragedy for Nigeria. I can't stop saying it. But they just kept printing money in the central bank, printing money and borrowing money to pay salaries. Printing, borrowing. Nigerian economy just tanked.
Okay, uh, Prof, another thing, eh? another thing with, uh, because today, you know, you'll be economist, so maybe we really know the place where we did. Uh, I like the, you know, the kind of language where they speak, so if you come and say, your own sweet fast my own self. <laughs> when I say, your speak, you speak, my, sweet fast my own self. <laughs> English, uh, <laughs> uh, and, uh, boy, I be. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right, that's good. Okay, now, Prof, now we look at uh, some of the this issue of this bully, the change. And there's another problem we'll get for this country. What would they hear? What would they see? This issue of uh, round tripping of our dollars, uh, this plenty, plenty, bully, the change, and all of that. What we see, it comes full everywhere. Now, the dollar is just going up, going up, going up, going up, going up. All this approach with CBN, they do that. Some people, they tell you, you know, go walk in a textbook approach. What will be the real solution to most of this problem? Mostly, it won't get to do with the borrow the change. Uh, but I borrow the change, you know, they cause any problem. So, if they work up on streets, bridge, change day, or left day, or right day, everywhere. Borrow the change everywhere. Now, just to make changing of money simple, follow market principles. They don't create problems. They look for who to blame. They will go begin the catch below the change people. No, it's not below the change, they cause problem. Problem, as I don't say before, you say we're not the produce. How many people they go farm now? Terrorists, I mean, they call them. Yes, uh, nappers, yes. all kinds of people. Yes. So, short, because people don't go farm. Uh, something where you need as input. Sorry. No, they are available. You import. These things, they, they, they chase all away way there. So much uh, need to, to find money to, to buy something come from uh, overseas. That, that then they put pressure on the Naira. Not people borrow the change. Yes, they get some malpractices. We'll be saying, who get the borrow the change, sir? They'll be the same people waiting for government. Uh -huh. So they go create uh, uh, outlets when they and ordinarily, eh, if if we not get multiple exchange rates, it will be a problem. If we happen to say under Buhari, we buy naira for months, say two hundred and thirty. Other people they say, oh, there's a special factory import. Oh, this one's na. A school fees one that one a special allocation for this is so do we get below the change and we go buy and a government people central bank era take the dollar go sell them for their below the change because we won't buy other things for 500 or 400 or whatever cause the problem if central bank no get multiple exchange rates it will holler anytime okay maybe we look at this issue of uh, ELCC most of the time prof what would they see we see you get some of some of our young people they call yahoo yahoo now we know from year to year would they hear now so this one two billion and so this one two billion so don't two billion but recently now, their eye now focus come day on those uh, young people who they invest than the people who say they they go catch. Well, uh, they're supposed to check everybody. You know, uh, this is your own business. Mm -hmm. The way it is important to check that kind of thing. Not, not be say with the government no the government with the team they need to catch them yes yeah yeah we boys you see what they have to say eh? through a woman gbt for yeah yeah yes and the time where you won't do serious business you say ah no be nigeria ah I can't trust nigeria i give you real example okay true example yes sir two years ago for one event for a Kedja for Lagos. So one man testimony about his experience. 
the government say make uh, um, the brewery people say they go ban importation of malted barley. So they then change their machines. Use uh, cassava and sorghum to take big beer. Companies like Guinness, Nigerian breweries, they go invest for new equipment. When behave as they behave for Nigeria, suddenly change in mind. Ah. So they can go back to, to the import malted barley. One of the machines where they bring come, Guinness bring come, they can sell them to this man. They want to kind of mix sorghum meal like uh, uh, Amala. All uh, parts for the uh, machine break. It's the fact that they make them for England. They make them send them uh, invoice. So they so go transfer uh, open letter of credit. Uh, produce that part sent to them. You don't get reply. In, uh, if, a few weeks later, I, meanwhile, they pay bank interest to, we don't take buy the equipment from, uh, from Guinness. A few weeks later, he sent another one, DHL. You don't hear anything. Six months later, he sent another one. You don't hear anything. So he can't enter plane and go to England. The factory. He said, I beg, I know they still make this part. They can. Uh, but I don't just write in a letter make them send me invoice because I take open LC for one year. So, uh, we know they do that kind of thing. We see your invoice, your letter, we'll send you invoice. Yeah. Which country are they from? Write <laughs> that letter. I say Nigeria. I say, ah, Nigeria. Company, we get policy. You see any letter where they mark Nigeria, no open them at all, just shred them. Four one nine. So you see the transaction costs for yes. that man and for the whole Nigerian economy. Yes, sir. Because of this kind of Yahoo Yahoo thing. Mm. So the cost they very, very high. No big thing. It affects our economy in a very, very bad way. You know, integrity be the soul of business. Uh, people where they do business with don't get integrity. Happen to you. Okay. So either no, don't do business with you, insurance, when they want to do business with you. Now we say, because of the price and the cost of insurance, the thing where they pay to do that business, so they higher than the person where they do them for Ghana. Things they very, very important. Yeah, we are boys, they don't do rich guys for government. Uh, uh, you guys will really steal for government. Uh, but, to but, prevent your who guys from doing. Uh, but prof, you want to really go yes. do well. Uh, prof, but, but if you look at the the anti-corruption uh, fight, the way it be, you know just say even I like say with the uh, job they do uh, pursue person like who they how they say make that people say the whole fight like who they job fight the way we say they do anti uh, corruption because we know the children they see the real people say that they, they catch they, they put for sale. The uh, the new CBN governor now uh, they tell us how much they don't loot. Uh, so so true, so true. When the people we get all the agency like the different agencies we say they get at the end of the day now we know they see the people we say they, they cash. And they saw that in the whole year they say that five people they, they cash they put to jail and we left trillions of money they go. Because of the kind of politicians you want to get, there will be one politician say if uh, uh, if you want to uh, make them not prosecute you, if you steal money, you know what, make them prosecute you, you can't join their party mm. to get to the green. Yes. Not the politician talk that. Yes, sir. But the institution of anti corruption for our country, they very weak. Mm. And it affects the country seriously. Many countries don't really take us serious as a place to do business. Because of this kind of corruption, all the steel, steel, when it is steel for government. Steel today, as we talk, serious, serious stealing. Huh? Which kind of people, the way they, they steal money, the way they steal. I don't know, you know, you know, they realize that they do, they do or something. 
<laughs> now people supposed to come out and protest against the kinds of position the kinds of things happen. Okay. So is there anything? So okay. Well, 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 me, like, me, uh, prof, me will go forward because you something. now you now one person who say you don't you don't deal well well. Uh, and uh, as you talk, so many people they listen and they send different records at the court. Maybe tell us about this or, or Ross IA committee, Ross IA committee will be say, uh, Mr. President, recently to say, make uh, the implement 12 years after. To you, uh, some they say it's ill time. To you, some say it will lead to job loss. But to you, when you look at that environment and the way you, at this time, now the right time to do and be this, or now the best decision be this, or it do okay for Nigeria. Question for the uh, uh, that uh, Orosai, uh, Orosai committee where they see me they implement. Okay, okay, report, uh, report, yes, yes. Report. yes. Well, uh, the Orosai committee where they see they implemented, uh, but because the politicians, uh, why you put them body, uh, uh implement them when they're supposed to implement them. So whether it's not the right time or the wrong time, as the book will say, there's never a, a, a time for the right thing. Um, the important thing is say you understand if you implement that kind of thing, you need a strategy to ensure that many people drop further into poverty by the implementation. I tell you, uh, for 1989, DFID people invite me for their office for London to come make presentation about the hard and fit help in the Nigerian economy where they won't enter uh, 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 99, sorry, where they won't enter civil, civil rule. I tell them, say, look, one of the problems in Nigeria I get, we say we get a bloated bureaucracy. Civil service, we just, people just fool them. They know they do any work. You know, in many countries, so one of the ways that I feel happening is visit people into other jobs to benefit with that kind of thing. When we do audits, you no know, say this kind of person, you know, supposed to do for this kind of job. Now because one your uncle will be minister ten years ago, he just put them there. We bring out those kind of people. You say, look, yeah, we need people. You know, whether or not that you did really need to train you to move to that teaching, that uh, 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 plumbing or whatever it is, will be the place where we need. No, no, no one go there. Say, okay, no option for you. If you want to start business, we prepare you, give you entrepreneurship training, and then loan day. When you take loan, then you go start. Pay for that one, and be say you're not serious, and be sack you. Then, if you do those kinds of things, they will help Nigeria move talent to where it is needed. Reduce the bloated bureaucracy. In 1999, <laughs> look up and down, up and down, reach the day where we did, where we did. Um, so, time is appropriate to implement the Aronsa report. Is whether the government today clever enough to do the appropriate things. Make sure say not too many people will suffer because of them. Hey, they, everybody, so many parastatal, every chief executive, page, siren, 20 cars, they follow up and down. Now, just to collapse all those parastatals, if money to save government, no, no be small. Mm -hmm. I joke when I see the report. Mm -hmm. I say, ah, this is very interesting. You know, cabinet, the biggest cabinet in Nigerian history. To implement a Ross IA report, I said, this one funny. Then they begin by reducing the salary of the cabinet by half, at least to start with. 
You know? Okay, make, make, make work us more. Uh, maybe we look at uh, the other side, which is uh, if you look now, our people will not go farm again, Prof. Uh, apart from say this uh, government has uh, just removed subsidy, it will just go up for some time now. When the former president gone, they can't enter. People will not go farm again before because of this insecurity. To your own, we also they see say some of these people who say they do most of these things. Larger part of them not come from this country. How we tell this year? So they say we get about how uh, many two hundred something border. Say they know they are man. So those want the carry this in the enter this country. How we tell this year? People come go back uh, enter our farms, and now we will not feel feel they go farm because with the fear say they will keep people. They will maybe they will rape and do everything. Where we then we feel come up for this country. Well, you know, when I hear all this story about insecurity, I laugh. But this modern age, satellites for this speed pick up the, the, the name tag of social media waiting for war front. You say, uh, 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 enough me to find the people waiting inside bush. We're not serious. If we're serious, we will go get. Uh, yeah, which is they call drones. I over bushes, they discover where the people will be and all of that. We just no serious, I tell you. They think us make money. Soldiers when they say go fight this thing, then they make money. Everybody think of their children, then they think of the future. Kill Nigeria today now this whole money business, money, 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 now you kill Nigeria. Everybody doing work. Uh, 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 um, what do they call them? Those who they take bribes for border immigration. Uh, 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 sorry, cost of their own. Cost of it. So everywhere for them. money, 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 money. Okay, make we work up. Let's forget collapse of culture. Yes. For Nigeria, yeah. the problem. I truth for money, money. I don't know what you make money become like this for Nigeria. Now, good name people take no us for now. Money, they do all kinds of things. Is security. Yes, technology they would take all these things, but so yeah, they find money. Politicians define money, everybody money, and country they die. Okay. Uh, uh, when we look at uh, the state of uh, for the health sector, for other countries, now primary health care, now it be the major thing we see, uh, it is deep for every, everywhere. But for this country, we see, say, uh, apart from all these teaching, everybody just concentrate on the teaching hospitals. Government, this government will go. This government will come. This government will go. This government will go. The health issue for inside this country can become a major problem. Right now, the whole complex, the whole thing, they go down. You know, the uh, uh, people who know something well, well, long time ago, say if country won't make progress, now two things, the most important one, education, the other one, health care. Uh, taking health care seriously, no one make progress. That primary health care we talk of, mm -hmm. India, uh, uh, small, small teeth and technology, we say, that rural area, uh, for one center like this, hold the kids, and come, they just remove blood, put inside. Go to doctor waiting for like Bini. I'm gonna come governor and I will mention his name. I tell him about this. They go. Go bring those things for India. Put them. Find all these uh, 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 um, health officers. Go inside all these places. Doctor waiting Bini will give prescription from the blood where the man put for the equipment. The man will get uh, this thing so that. Sickness will reduce. 
professor of, of, of Oxford, really called Paul Cooley, with my friend. Mm. Uh, and um, so they, they criticize people who say the problem of um, development in uh, uh, um, destiny, geography. In a policy with the problem. Policy in place. Those countries don't eliminate malaria, you know, day at all for their country. People just they die anyhow, anyhow for Nigeria because of malaria. People know serious. Which kind of government we get? Don't know Small islands, Arabia, they don't eliminate malaria. What you could do our politicians who better know what priority. Okay. You know, they're supposed to focus on. Uh, but we got, I mean, we now, so we're not supposed to get malaria still left for Nigeria. Yeah. Uh, the thing they pay first, you know. Not be small, not be small. Uh, maybe we see what I can't go from small, prof. Uh, the other area now be electricity. Maybe you tell us small thing about this, Mabila and... Yeah, we, 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 we won't be the young people. Would they, would they, would they, would they whip, say... We're going to hear country like uh, Ghana, South Africa, say now, so they get so, so thousand uh, megawatts. Our own, as we make my trish, now 3,000 something. For President Buhari, eight years, now 3,000 something, uh, 4,000 something. For President Jonathan, uh, eight years, I'll be how many years only be uh, president. Now, for, we run from 3,000 to 4,000 to three. Ah, for, for all this one, where would they? Where would they get that one? I like sleep it? this night, eh? No, take back, no sleep. Eh? Because this question, eh? Vietnam. Then fighting this terrible war. America carpet bomb Vietnam, bomb, 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 bomb. Then finish war. A few years. Vietnam power up. They get temporary power. Which one top uh, badges up the Mekong River. But the so called famous parties will come Nigeria mm. from 1999. Uh, mm. That's what they want to use for Vietnam. Yes. And then begin to put permanent power. Yes. Egypt. See, which is the bigger 50 something thousand. See, Nigeria and Egypt approach the same company called Siemens. Look, we want you to help us with power. Um, so, see, Siemens, get money. We're going to go borrow money, build all this plant to give us uh, some sovereign guarantee. Deliver this power in such a time. And then we'll recover the money and pay you. Same company. Wait, wait, we will we'll find the money, pay owner. See, they find the money, Egypt will done the in place. Again, corruption, corruption, corruption. That's all. The Nigerian people want to steal money. And there we go. Okay, uh, Prof. Time not there again. Make you just advise. The young, young people who say all of them they call say they won't see your face, they won't see your face. Don't talk to them about the future. Where will they go from here? Because we don't know what they want to again. Maybe advise them. Most of the organized young people, those who are try to organize answers, they knock them down. Again, to do obedient, rig election. They're not supposed to give up. Not, if we not give up, now the future will they ruin. They organize, put pressure on the system, make the system do say government now uh, to help the people. No be where people they go steal money. Organize myself, focus on production. Now we look for shortcuts to make money because that shortcut no be sustainable. Something will happen down the line. If we uh, want to it create small clusters when I will produce the package take value chains so this value chain say na we be a plantain value chain various things we will do for this plantain value chain cells to work that value chain to this thing but more importantly we could forget this business of say politics now where people they go find money and beg Nobody's supposed to make money from politics. Politics now, they don't experience to go help them people. So they gain from politics and immortality. Say so they will remember you forever and God will bless you. They go find money. But 
putting the politics and they go make money, they put eye for that kind of politics. Their country, they die for their presence. Their children will suffer. Okay. So bless all of them. Amen. Because properly, Amen. And our country will better. Our country will better. Amen. Okay. okay. No be more. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. We, we salute you, Prof. Uh, we take journals uh, all the way from Lagos this evening. Uh, I put for us. Uh, we can see the man where they talk now. So I be one nationalist and uh, one patriotic Nigerian, uh, renowned economist, Professor Pat Utomi. Anything we concern this country at all, indeed. See, I say the followers are not pigeon scenes because in a one person will say he believes in this country. He go a Prof. We sign a lot to give. We believe another time. We we'll see call you give me you the journals. They talk me young people they get hope and they see you. We greet you and they will also see me we greet the family and every other people we see it there around you. Thank you very much, Prof, uh, for the opportunity. Okay. God bless. Thank you, sir. Well, for us, uh, not so good to wrap our program today. And I will say yes, uh, we did talk to one of uh, our person we say it pull home out for national issues. We'll join again next week. Until then, God bless Nigeria.